For professional advice with a personal touch, consult Fuller Landau, Chartered Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. 807 on CJD. Welcome to another edition of Today's Entrepreneur presented by Fuller Landau, a program about the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. Dan Delmar along with my co-host Fuller Landau's Josh Miller. Welcome back, Josh. Great to be here again, Dan. And uh, today, uh, for those who are vegan, vegetarian, uh, definitely a show for you. In studio is the founder of Nutri-Soya, Nick Feldman. Welcome, Nick. Hi. Uh, so perhaps we can start uh, from from the beginning. I, can, I, th I think it's good to let the listeners know, you know, for those that aren't sure what the product is or what the company is, mm -hmm. let Nick uh, kind of tell us where his business is today, what kind of product he sells, and then he can take us back to the beginning and, and, and tell us that story right from the ground up. Great. Nutrisoya makes, markets, and sells Natura brand products, mainly rice and soy beverages, uh, and non-dairy frozen desserts. We are the biggest uh, soy beverage company in Canada, and uh, we're based in St. Hyacinth, in Quebec. Tell us about, uh, about the product itself. Is it all organic, all vegan, vegetarian? Our products are vegan, vegetarian, organic, and natural. So you don't offend anybody? No, we try to, uh, <laughs> we're, we're good with everyone. Great. <laughs> uh, good with all customers of all, of all uh, sizes, shall we say. So tell us, Nick, uh, you know, certainly the product is, uh, is pretty well known today. It's, on, it's in many, many uh, markets on lots of shelves. But where did it start? Give us a little bit of the, of the background and history. Well, I started off, uh, you know, I, I, grad, I have a business uh, degree in administration. I uh, have an MBA. And uh, when I uh, graduated, I was looking for a business. I did a research project on the uh, health food industry. And I realized that soy was the uh, superfood of the future. And uh, it was an up and coming product. And uh, I went to my local bank and I asked them to uh, keep an eye out for uh, a business that uh, fit that description. And they, um, uh, they called me several months later and they had an opportunity. Uh, it was a tofu business, mom and pop, uh, small in size, uh, with a lot of debt and a lot of uh, financial difficulty. But, uh, you know, based on uh, limited funds, that was something that uh, fit my, uh, my uh, needs. And uh, I uh, had, a, had to make a decision very quickly. I didn't have much time. I embarked in it. It was a risk. And uh, today, uh, you know, we went from uh, having a business of doing about $400,000 in sales to uh, a business selling over $30 million a year. Did you care when you went to the bank and you approached them and you have this, uh, I guess, entrepreneurial spirit that had to let loose after this business administration course? Uh, did you care what sector? You really just wanted to find a business that you could call your own. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm a guy who likes to eat. I love food. Uh, I did a research project on the health food industry. Uh, people were uh, starting to look, uh, uh, you know, you know, staying away from junk food and uh, eating healthy. And uh, you know, soy uh, was uh, big in other countries and growing. And uh, I felt it was an opportunity. Um, uh, you know, it started off in a business that I'm not in today, which is tofu. I'm selling soya beverages today and um, and rice beverages and other non-dairy alternatives. But um, one thing led to another, and uh, that's it. N Nutrisoy became a big hit. When you went to the bank and you, you, you said you were looking for a business and you were a, a student with very little, if any, business experience... Um, you know, did they treat you properly? Was it was it a, a big battle, an uphill battle? How did you have to fight to kind of explain to them, hey, you're the guy that can do this? Well, you know, I came uh, I came in there uh, hopping on one leg and breathing out of one nostril. Uh, you know, it. Uh, uh, I had a big idea, and uh, they I presented them a uh, uh, you know my my credentials and what I can do, and uh, um, and that's it. The uh, opportunity was there, and. Um, um, you know, I had to, uh, I got involved in a lot of debt. It was very difficult. Uh, we were losing money at the beginning and, uh, it was, uh, a marathon until, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 you know, as I said, we started in tofu. We, uh, we, we knew that we needed to do something different than what the company was doing. And, uh, we said, uh, 
instead of uh, moving forward, we uh, instead of um, um, continuing with the tofu, we said, hey, you know, we're using soya milk to make tofu. Why not make uh, soya beverages out of the same soya milk, add some flavors, uh, make different uh, flavored soya beverages? Uh, it wouldn't be as labor intensive. And, uh, uh, you know, we focused on that and that became the big, uh, uh, big hit uh, of the company. You know, Josh, we often talk here on, on this program about uh, weathering the storm, but in Nick's case, he had to buy a business uh, that was already in debt mm -hmm. and maybe that required just that extra amount of motivation. How did you find the energy, the determination to take on that, that challenge, which was um, even bigger than, than buying the average business? Well, you know, you have to make a lot of sacrifices and, uh, uh, you know, your social life and uh, uh, it takes many, many uh, hours and uh, you know I uh, spent uh, six seven days a week at the plant trying to make things happen trying to convince employees that uh, there was good things coming and uh, uh, trying to uh, build confidence and uh, at the same time uh, developing uh, uh, new products and uh, which were the soya beverages and uh, so you know it's a juggling act uh, it wasn't easy at the beginning did you find yourself Getting, I mean, you really had to roll up your sleeves and learn every part of that business. Yeah, you know, I, I, I you know, accounting, uh, management, ordering ingredients, uh, uh, packing the product, I, I, you know, production. Uh, uh, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, shoestring budget, not much money, and uh, I had to learn the business and uh, learn the different uh, aspects of the business. And, uh, you know, it it's, uh, took a lot of energy. And uh, now you were, I guess, at the outset with very little money, you had to you either taking some risk or be very calculating. Uh, how would you classify, you know, how you were working at the beginning? Uh, at the beginning, uh, you know, every decision had to be uh, looked into in detail because one uh, wrong turn and uh, we were off track and uh, that would have been the end. We were extremely fragile uh walking on eggshells um and uh it, it was a balancing act it, it really uh um it's not easy when you're uh, uh you don't have much money it's not easy and i think when we come back after the break dan we're gonna hear nick talk about how we kind of jump from doing everything himself and walking on those eggshells to really try and find his first right hand person and really watch that business grow 514-790-0991 and Star Talk, Star 8255 on Bell Mobility. Today's Entrepreneur presented by Fuller Landau and our guest this evening, Nick Feldman, the founder of NutriSoya. Uh, they make a natural brand, uh, organic non-dairy food alternatives, uh, soy beverages, rice beverages. So more with Nick in uh, just a moment. CJD time is 8.15. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult Fuller Landau, Chartered Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome back to today's Entrepreneur, inspiring stories from outstanding business people, Dan Delmar, along with my co-host, Fuller Landau's uh, Josh Miller, and our guest this evening, Nick Founder, uh, Nick Feldman, excuse me, uh, founder of NutriSoya. And uh, Nick, we're talking about uh, how you bought over a mom and pop uh, soy operation uh, that was heavily in debt. And uh, how did you turn the corner? At what point did you begin to battle back and, and see the light at the end of the tunnel? Well, we knew that the business wasn't viable with tofu alone. Uh, it was very labor intensive. Uh, we were using that soy milk to make tofu. Why not use that soy milk to make beverages? Uh, we got an R and D grant from the government, which was very, uh, we were, you know, that money uh, was very uh, important to the company at that time. And uh, we developed formulas, um, uh, non dairy alternatives made from our soy milk, and. Um, that really became the main component of the company. That's why we're a success today. It was those soya beverages. Later, of course, we came up with rice beverages and non-dairy frozen desserts, but uh, that was really uh, our turning point. You know, you, two comments. One is, you know, you, you addressed R&D, and I think a lot of small businesses, R&D, by the way, being research and development, and there's certainly a number of government tax credits that, that companies can get for it. Uh, was that something you knew about you and did you rely on that at the beginning i mean how how important was that and 
you know, the government is a bit of a double-edged sword, and sometimes entrepreneurs say, well, I pay too much to the government, yet there are small businesses that are really trying to make a difference, and these R&D tax credits can help a lot. So, Nick, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what your take is on it, certainly at the outset. Well, the first part was getting the grant, which wasn't uh, related to the uh, tax credit, the R&D tax credit that we everyone knows about today. Uh, so we got that grant, and after we received the grant, we developed, we spent money, we um, uh, we developed products, and then we applied for a R&D tax credit, uh, which was new at the time, and uh, that money, when it came in also, was very crucial. Uh, I, I had a friend that uh, knew about... Uh, um, uh, what was involved into getting those tax credits, and it really uh, helped the company, uh, gave it a, a lifeline to uh, move and do things. Now, coming back to where you were really, you know, kind of chief cook and bottle washer, the sleeves were rolled up, you're turning the corner, you've decided to, you know, move from tofu, from labor intensive to uh, to more the, the Nutrisoy, the soybean type product. Um, at what point do you look to have a right-hand person? At what point do you look to grow that business, but that you need to recognize that you, that help is required? Well, you know, good employees, you know, it costs money to have good employees. They don't come free. And uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, the company started doing better, and uh, we knew that we had to start uh, spending the big bucks to get those key people uh, because, you know, I you know, I couldn't be uh, continue being a one-man show. And uh, I had to to expand and uh, put people in place. And uh, I found somebody that uh, really helped the company. And uh, um, and I found it later after, uh, a few years later, I found somebody else and, you know, kept building, finding key people that uh, helped, uh, uh, you know, you know, gave me a social life. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I can't, I could, you know, I couldn't continue being a slave to the business for the rest of my life. I had to grow. Was it difficult to find people? I mean, did you ever have a moment where you had to persevere beyond the people that weren't necessarily putting out, so to speak? Well, there's people that are already, you know, involved in the industry. They're like your rock stars, popular people, people that everybody know. Um, first person I hired was working at a very big natural health food store. He managed it. He promoted it. And uh, I remember uh, having, when I used to uh, want to, uh, you know, sell to the store, I had to go see him and practically kiss his hand to uh, have him buy my product. And uh, um, he, I ended up hiring him. And uh, uh, he ended up, uh, you know, uh, being as devoted as I was with the company. I find that uh, that entrepreneurs don't always trust people very easily. So it really does take time to to get involved, to get in somebody's head, to have them really understand that business and to for the entrepreneur to, to know that they have, that the employee has their business at heart as well. And I'm sure, Nick, uh, as soon as we get back from the next break, you can tell us a little bit on your feelings on how you trust people, how you select people, and, you know, if they're not working out, you know, how, how quickly do you move on? Today's entrepreneur on CJAD, our guest, Nick Feldman from Nutrisoya, 514-790-0991 and Star Talk, Star 8255 on Bell Mobility, 823. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult Fuller Landau, Chartered Accountants and Business Advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. Welcome back to today's entrepreneur uh, with uh, Josh Miller, Dan Delmar, also, and our guest this evening, Nick Feldman, the founder of NutriSoya, makers of uh, Natura brand. And uh, before the break, uh, we were talking about the importance of key people in businesses, and uh, and Nick, especially like one uh, one like uh, like these these organic non dairy products. Uh, people uh, people take these products very seriously. Um, they're very attached to them. So uh, talk a bit about the importance of hiring people, bring people on board that have um, street cred, if you want to put it that way in the industry well you know uh, you got to hire people that uh, are known in the industry uh, this way you can uh, you can advance a lot quicker uh, if nobody knows the person then you know it's uh, it's a longer uh, takes more time but uh, this person I hired I uh, was very well known in the industry and uh, you know uh, people associate the product with uh, the people that are representing it and uh, 
the people I hire uh, have to uh, fit well with the product. Do you think it would be it'd be more difficult if you were pitching, uh, you know, soda or soft drinks or something that's a bit less, uh, a sort of less naturey, less organic? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, some people, uh, you know, everyone has a different face and a different image, and uh, the image has to go well with the product you're representing. And with the, you know, certainly as you gain the the right people or the key people, you have people to bounce ideas off of. I mean, how important, do you have a, a core group of people that when you have your vision, when you have your gut feel, when you have your product ideas that you gather around the table and kind of pitch to? Well, we're three key people that make the final decision. We work with a marketing firm uh, that comes up with great ideas. They're a small firm, and we've been working with them for uh, the past, uh, I would say, 10 years. And uh, they really helped uh, advance the uh, brand image and um but a lot of the brainstorming goes between three people that uh you know try to uh challenge every uh every idea or every uh until we have it uh, pretty much bulletproof and uh, we're ready to fly is there a specific uh, something you did differently for your brand image uh, some either uh, advertising campaign or something that really worked well for you well you know we're a, a dairy alternative uh I don't know, soya milk has uh, the same protein levels, uh, calcium levels uh, as dairy milk. So we're a dairy alternative for people who are lactose intolerant. And, you know, and we're, we're dealing with a, a North American consumer. They're used to drinking dairy milk. And uh, we want to uh, try to uh, have some type of so an association where people, um, you know, feel comfortable with the product, that they're not drinking something from... Uh, a uh, foreign country that is uh, uh, different. It's uh, so we, you know, white box, um, very clean uh, image. That's the uh, health natural. More with uh, with Nick Feldman, founder of Nutrisoya, in a moment. This is today's entrepreneur on CJAD. It's eight thirty. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult Fuller Landau, chartered accountants and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. 8.32, welcome back to Today's Entrepreneur, presented by Fuller Landau, a program about the entrepreneurial spirit that drives Quebec business. Dan Delmar, along with Fuller Landau's Josh Miller, and a guest this evening, Nick Feldman. He is the founder of Nutrisoya. Uh, they make a Natura brand. And um, before the break, we're talking about the importance of associating, Nick, uh, your company with, um, with good people, people who can uh, have credibility uh, when it comes to pitching this product. And uh, you have... One uh, one big name that that speaks for your company. Tell us about uh, about her. Yeah, we have uh, Clara Hughes. She's a two-time Olympic champion. She's won uh, medals in the Summer and Winter Olympics. She's unique. There's no one of her kind in uh, uh, sports in Canada who has accomplished what she's accomplished. Uh, and uh, she is a woman. She consumes our product and uh, highly respected and actually she came to us and she she said i'm a big consumer of your products and i want to uh, help promote them uh, for you and uh one thing led to the next and uh, we ended up uh, uh developing a very good relationship between uh, our company uh, her and our company you, i want to take us a little bit back uh you know towards the beginning and a lot of entrepreneurs have mentors, have somebody that they kind of bounce ideas off of and look up to at the beginning of their, uh, I guess, uh, beginning of their business cycle. Is there somebody that really helped you out in the beginning? Well, you know, I, uh, I, I had my father at the very beginning. He's a lawyer. And uh, at the very beginning, we had very little money. And obviously, every company needs uh, some legal work done. And uh, obviously, my father, he's... Uh, uh, he did a lot of that work free of charge out of his pocket to help the company survive when we were, uh, uh, you know, uh, bleeding and uh, had some difficulties and uh, growing pains, I should call them. And uh, he always gave very good advice. And uh, uh, most of the time, his advice was uh, right. Always follow your father's advice? <laughs> Not always. <laughs> Well, that's the story of the entrepreneur. You kind of go with your gut. And I, I'm sure, Nick, you you know, you have your, your gut and you have your vision 
what what is the goal? You're you're a successful entrepreneur. Where where's your goal? Where do you see yourself in in a few years from now? Well, I'd like to diversify a little more. I'd like to come up with more food products that are healthy, natural, and good for you, and uh, maybe get into some acquisitions and uh, uh, try to expand the brand. How how far have you expanded? Because your product is is sold not just in Quebec, obviously, but uh, but many places. We sell across Canada. Uh, we're like I said, the number one company across Canada. We're extremely strong in the Caribbean and Central America. Uh, you probably see our product is as popular there as it is here in Quebec. Wow. Uh, we do sell uh, northeastern Whole Foods in the United States on the uh, uh, northeast, uh, and uh, you know we export to Israel, Lebanon, uh, Greece. Uh, but uh, our you know Caribbean and Canada—that's our two big markets. Was it difficult to get to those international markets? Like, what was your first step to get there? Oh boy, uh, first steps to get there is you got to go and uh, represent the brand. Um, uh, you know, I went there on my at the very beginning. I didn't have any salespeople working for me, and I uh, went to see the uh, the buyer of Costco at that time. It was called uh, Club Price, and uh, I got an appointment. It was at the time it was in Laval, and uh, I made a good presentation. She liked the product. And she was willing to give it a try. And uh, we did a lot of demos. We promoted the product in the store. And that really became one of our biggest customers today because Costco United States bought them over. And uh, it became a giant across Canada. And that really brought us to the next level. You've worked with uh, so many uh, you know, large customers. Uh, and you've built up your reputation along the way. As you look back, uh, is there any business decision you might have done a little bit differently with the knowledge you have today, given you know where you're located in the markets or whatever it may be? Is there something you would have maybe pushed on a little bit differently? Well, there's the refrigerated soy milk market, and uh, I started it. I was the last one at the party there because uh, at that time, uh, the, the industry, the soy milk market was smaller, and... Um, to get into the refrigerated section, you needed to be represented by a dairy company, and we were we were not associated with any dairy company. Our competitors were, and uh, at that time, you needed to do store-to-store -store delivery, distribution. Uh, so it was we didn't have that. Uh, um, we we weren't able to do that and offer that. Uh, today, uh, it, the uh, market became a lot bigger, so the opportunity was there to sell directly to Central Warehouse, and that's when we got in. So slowly but surely, we, we keep on uh, uh, catching up, and uh, our sales keep increasing, and uh, uh, on the refri in the refrigerated uh, uh, section. Is it? I often hear that you know when you're dealing with majors and you want to get a product in, you know you kind of have to buy your shelf space. Uh, how did that work with you, and, you know, is it, is it different today than what it used to be? Well, you know, I started in 1993. Back then, it was a lot cheaper to get in. Today, of course, uh, listing fees are a lot more expensive. you got to have money. Uh, you got to uh, pay to play. And um, the, um, um, you know, uh, the good thing is is that we're a natural food product, so... The uh, major chains are a little more lenient when it comes to listing fees since we're not considered a mass market product. You know, you know we've been talking about this, this wonderful product that's certainly to a, a specific clientele. So in as much as running your business, there's the accounting and there's the make sure the sales are right. Product development must play a huge role. Uh, you know, the, the quality control aspect of it, the cleanliness, the flavor, the taste, all the everything that goes into the product development process must be key. How do you deal with that? What is what is your way to deal with that in, in Nutrisoya? Well, every product that's uh, delivered on the market has to be uh, approved, uh, has to get my stamp of approval. and um, you, you, Nick Feldman, your stamp of approval? That's right. And, and I'm I, the king taster of the company, <laughs> and uh, uh, if I don't like it, it doesn't. Even if a hundred people love it, if I don't love it, it's just not going to go on the shelf. So, are you controlling? 
Uh, I'm controlling, but I'm also uh, flexible at the same time. I have <laughs> it uh, when it comes to my food, though. I, I sort of control. I, I seem to have a good gut instinct about what uh, is going to make it, and have uh, long, long uh, um, become a long distance uh, a runner. But again, you you know you you say you have your key people, and you're certainly bouncing ideas off of them. Do, do you? Who's the idea generator? I, I, I challenge them. I, uh, you know, they come to me with ideas, and I try to knock down their ideas. I give them a hard time. I look at all types of reasons why it's not going to work. And if they're good lawyers and they're able to argue their point, and uh, and, and I keep you know, I keep trying to you know, uh, you know, come up with you know, uh, uh, reasons why it's not going to work. And if they keep uh, winning their arguments, then uh, you know, I'll give it a chance. It's. Uh, but the people have to, you know, they have to make, they have to fight for the, uh, for the product. They have to make sure that the idea, the concept, uh, is going to be delivered and uh, makes sense. Do you do any test research or marketing? Do you rely on that, or you kind of go with your uh, gut? We do, we do, uh, we do both. Um, uh, we do a lot of panel tasting, and uh, uh, but. Uh, but you what know, you say goes. But what I say goes, <laughs> you know. What I say goes for sure. Now, there's got to be, I mean, it, it's an ever-evolving product. I mean, certainly uh, the, the tastes of people change. There's certain, I don't want to call them fads, but there's certain tastes that come out uh, that I'm sure people are, are looking for a little variety, a little different. Can you give us a kind of an insight about uh, what the latest is or what's coming well, we, up? We, uh, you know, we keep improving the recipe we keep uh you know we just you know we have about a hundred different versions of the original recipe and uh you know competitions out there and you got to keep uh working at it getting better uh, and, and and making the product as tasty as possible taste is really important uh people of course it's 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 good for you it's healthy no cholesterol no trans fat uh vegetarian but taste is uh king what are some of your more popular uh, soy beverages, and and what uh, what makes a good soy beverage? I guess it has to maybe taste like it's not a soy beverage. Uh, the biggest challenge we've had since the beginning, and we've almost uh, you know, is is making it resemble dairy milk. What consumers are used to. We don't want to scare them away. If it tastes like dairy milk, they may like it. Uh, so we want to get rid of that beany taste. It takes, uh, you know, it's, it's the process, uh, soaking, uh, temperature, um, uh, and the type of extraction, and the idea is to make it tasty and resemble dairy milk. It's a dairy alternative, and we want to, you know, we want to be equivalent nutrition-wise and better for you health-wise. One, you know, before before we uh, kind of wrap up, I'm really curious because you have all these recipes and it's been developed over the years. How do you how do you protect them? How do you know? Do people copy them? How do you how do you protect? How does the business protect itself from from competition? Oh boy, uh, you know it's uh, uh, you know even if I seal the room and uh, <laughs> uh, lock all my file cabinets, uh, people are going to try to figure something out to. Uh, you know, to make something similar, but, uh, you know, there's a brand image attached to it. Uh, it's the way we deliver the product, and um, uh, and our process is pretty tough to uh, copy. Um, uh, that's uh, all in-house, and um, good luck for whoever tries. <laughs> um, so tell me, Nick, you know, as, as today's entrepreneur is certainly starting out, um, do, what words of wisdom do you have to impart to today's entrepreneur? Uh, don't give up. Start small. Stay focused. And, um, you know, you just got to, you know, there's going to be a lot of obstacles. A lot of uh, people are going to try to discourage you. Stand tall and keep going. You know what I, uh, thank you very much, Nick. W what I'm taking away from the last uh, 40 minutes or so from, from Nick's story, which I, I know continues, but we're kind of running out of time, is that there's, you got to start small, you got to persevere, you got to roll up your sleeves, you can't be afraid to do the job of the company. You got to get to know it, and ultimately, you will find the people, and you will trust the people, because you can't grow it if you can't expand for the people around you. And I think it's very important that the entrepreneur knows what he knows, but also realizes what he doesn't know and then bring those people in and surround them properly. 
And I think, Nick, Nick you've, you've certainly were able to teach us that lesson, and, and hopefully the listeners got a chunk out of that as well. Yeah, just to uh, let you know, we just uh, launched a new uh, line of uh, Natura S2. Uh, for th those who tried soy milk in the past and didn't like it, uh, I insist you try it again because uh, this is, uh, I mean, my kids can't get enough of it. They love it. It's, uh, we have different flavors, apple, mango, pineapple, orange, and uh, it's the S2. Why we call it S2? It's the best of both worlds, juice and milk you get your calcium your protein and your vitamin c all in one beverage all based on a lot of hard work a lot of product development sounds good uh nick feldman co-founder co-found uh, of a nutrisoya maker of the natura brand uh, thanks for coming in nick thank you 845 on cjad for professional advice with a personal touch consult fuller landau chartered accountants and business advisors click on flmontreal.com 848, welcome back to today's Entrepreneur, and uh, let's move on to uh, tax issues, of course. It is the time of year, uh, Josh. Uh, joining us in studio, the tax partner at Floor Landau, Nick Moretis. Welcome, Nick. Hi. Um, so, uh, you know, business owners at this point see that deadline looming, and they think, there's no way in heck I'm going to meet that. Uh, you got to give them a kick in the rear end to meet those deadlines, right? You know, there, there's so much detail. I mean, the government laws and regulations are volumes and volumes and volumes deep and there's uh, you know the devil is in the detail and uh and nick uh, I, I think you know you'll you're, you're gonna what you're gonna tell us is that you know the government is a bit of a partner in business well, the, the government is indeed a partner um we always focus that they're a partner in our financial results but they're also a partner in the time that we need to consecrate to not working on client affairs or not necessarily working on developing products or servicing but on filling in forms and providing them the information they need to, to, I guess, administer the country. And unfortunately, as much as we, we all try to do this to our best efforts, the governments over time have developed uh, little um, rules that we have to meet, and, and um, God help you that if you don't meet those rules, because there is our penalties. And, and this is the period right now, uh, from about February to April, where there's a lot of efforts being put in by all accountants and bookkeepers internally working inside the company or externally helping the company with a whole bunch of forms and, and documents that the governments need. Um, so just as an example, uh, the, before the end of this month, you got your, your payroll forms, your T4s and relevé ones that have got to get out there. Um, they have to balance to your, to your records. And if, you, if you're late with them, there's penalties. And the penalties can uh, uh, usually run by day. Uh, so for a small business who um, misses out on that February 28 deadline, it's $10 penalty per day for a small business to one government, and you got $25 a day going to the other for the next 100 days. This hurts. Um, if, you're, if you're an entrepreneur, you probably, your company may have paid you a dividend, may have paid you interest on a loan. Well, there's forms called T5s or Releve 3s that are due by the end of this month, too, and somebody better be calculating them. And what gets very interesting is if you haven't yet closed your books or haven't started working towards your year end, if you say a December company, you have to move your books, uh, get up to speed really quick to get this information out there. Now, Nick, let, let's say that, you know, the company and small business has been fortunate and it's made a chunk of change in the past. Um, the government does require that you pay your taxes in advance, correct? Absolutely. Um, that, that was down the list, but I can jump to it right now. Corporate taxes, as you may know, you, you should be making monthly installments. And if you don't make monthly installments, um, this is how the country is financing itself. And not making your monthly installments, or if you're an individual not making your quarterly installments, there are severe penalties. Aside from the interest, which some people may shrug their shoulders because the interest could run 5 6 7% right now, um, compounded daily, I may add, there's additional penalties um, that could be 10% of the amount that you should have paid, not the interest that you're going to be charged, but the uh, installment you should have paid to get added on there. It's not something that you should hold back and, and pay it once you know what the exact tax bill is. You should make estimates. But for uh, corporations, once you've been making your installments, which is basically an estimate of what you think you're going to be paid based, based upon certain rules, you really you have by the end of the second month in some cases for the federal government by the end of the third month um, basically paying what taxes you should owe so if your books are in a disarray 
um, you're going to be hit with interest from that point on. So it's usually uh, important to get keep your books up to date and then make those payments because this interest that you're paying is not deductible, which basically means you're going to be paying income taxes in addition to that interest. So it starts getting very expensive. So they, I mean, the the rules and the dead list of deadlines is is enormous. Depending, you know, with corporations, with individuals, and it and it goes on and on. And I think when we get back from the break, we'll even delve into that a little further. More with uh, Nick Moretis, tax partner at Fuller Landau. This is today's entrepreneur on CJ80. For professional advice with a personal touch, consult Fuller Landau, chartered accountants, and business advisors. Click on flmontreal.com. 856, welcome back to Today's Entrepreneur with Josh Miller of Fuller Landau. Also of uh, Fuller Landau is a Nick Moretis, tax partner, and it is, of course, tax season. One of the last things I think we should cover before we wrap up for the evening, Dan, is huge changes with the rules on CSST and the payments and premiums. And Nick, maybe you can give us a very quick rundown of what SMEs and what business owners should be aware of. Well, first of all, the CSST, which is the Commission de Santé et Sécurité du Travail, uh, or work, the Workmen's Compensation Board, uh, is um, all businesses who have at least one employee and worker should be registered with them. And if uh, any uh, businessmen out there do not know what I'm talking about, you should speak to somebody quickly um, because there are severe penalties um, if uh, you're not covered for workman's comp. And a big change uh, started uh, in January where your premiums for the uh, CSST, which were uh, in the past uh, calculated on, on estimates of what your salaries are going to be, are now coming off or should be coming off your, your, um, the payrolls. Uh, on a regular basis, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly or once a month and remit it to the Revenue Quebec. Um, so that is a, a major change. And, and the more important one is uh, if anybody's been bugging you or, and asking you for information so you can be properly registered, uh, find out uh, exactly what's going on if you do not know what the CSST is. And, I, and if I understand correctly, Nick, there's also, if you haven't ever filed in the past because you just didn't know the story, then there's certainly, you can go to the government and, and have a voluntary disclosure so that it minimizes the pain afterwards. There, they, there's not very specific rules that they have established on that, but there is a, 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 a basis to call them up voluntarily, advise them that uh, you've had employees now for some time, you would like to open up an account and register, and then discuss, um, you're going to have to pay the premiums that were owed all these years. Uh, there will certainly be interest, and then and see how you can determine or uh, reduce the penalty charges. That could be close to 15% on, on the amount owing. Absolutely. And once again, we see why the government can certainly be a business partner to the entrepreneur. Nick, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I think that, you know, the, certainly, Dan, the takeaways I get, I take from this show uh, – Feeding off of, of Nick's comment, well, there we have two Nicks, but Nick Moretis, a tax partner, is you really got to work on the detail. You got to make sure that somebody out there knows it. And if I can feed off of Nick Feldman and Nutrisoya, it's know what you know, know what you know, and don't you know know what you don't know. In other words, do what you do really well. Be the entrepreneur, be the visionary, roll up your sleeves and do what you have to. But at some point, if you're either not the detail guy, if you can't maintain all these compliance matters or follow up, don't let it hurt your business. Don't let your ego get in the way. Don't, don't do anything to spite anybody. And that's what an entrepreneur, that's part of what his character is. Josh Miller, thank you very much. And we'll see you next Monday night for another episode of Today's Entrepreneur, 8 o'clock next Monday. And a thank you to the Knicks, Nick Moretis, tax partner at Fuller Landau, and Nick Feldman, founder of Nutrisoya. You can reach Fuller Landau during business hours at 514-875-2865 or visit www.flmontreal.com. Delmar at night is next on CJD. 